And this team here, although we haven't seen them together a lot, certainly they're on the same page. And J-Rod, uh, the Triple Crown champion here at Rampage Pro Wrestling, holding all of the titles at one point or another. And Adrian Hawkins, always a big fan favorite here. Hawkins, uh, a little less hair than last time we saw him, but he still has a bandana, and a fan still wants the bandana. It's, wonder where it's going to go. Where it lands, nobody knows. He wears that hot paint a lot better than uh, Anthony Andrews does. Would you I, agree? I, I think <laughs> that he would wear anything better than Anthony Andrews does. <laughs> Should be a great matchup here, Rampage Pro Wrestling. And glad you joined us because, as we said, still to come, the NWA RPW heavyweight title is on the line. Great championship edition here. Call someone and tell them Rampage is on the air. And Adrian Hawkins stepping out. Referee Stan Robinson trying to get them back to a neutral corner so that we can get this match started. It's already still on the floor. Jimmy Rave approved team of Patrick Bentley, Chip Day, Corey Hollis. We saw Corey Hollis in action last week. And it's going to be uh, Adrian Hawkins starting out for his team. And Chip Day, do or die, starts out for his in the six-man tag team action. We're missing, of course, the fourth member of the uh, multi-person team, Mike Posey. Mike Posey uh, on the road for Impact Wrestling, Total Nonstop Action Wrestling, went to uh, the Mississippi House shows for them this weekend, not available for Rampage Pro Wrestling. Also conspicuous by his absence, and we didn't see him last week either, and I find that a bit odd, is the uh, mastermind himself, Jimmy Ray. You know, and I worry more about when I see when I don't see Jimmy Ray than when I see him because I know he's up to something. Well, you worry. I wonder about poor Miss Allie because last time Jimmy Ray came out here, he assaulted Miss Allie. I know fans have been irate about that. Dr. Johnny Gayton told me he had personal emails sent asking him to take some aggressive action against Jimmy Ray. I know she did get some bruises from that. Obviously, uh, she is a ring announcer, and she's a woman, and uh, she's not trained to be in a wrestling ring to start with as a wrestler. So anytime you take your hands on someone that's not a trained professional, uh, it just told me that Jimmy Ray, I think he knows better, but he certainly right now is not thinking very straight. No, Sal Renaro had gotten him uh, out of his comfort zone, but lately Jimmy Rave has been out of the comfort zone. In fact, since Sal Renaro turned his back on Jimmy Rave approved in war games, Jimmy Rave has not been the same guy, and we heard that directly from the mouths of his guys from the Jimmy Rave approved team. Something's wrong with Jimmy Rave right now. Well, Sal Renaro and Jimmy Rave go way back on both ends on, as friends and as foes. And in fact, it was uh, Sal Renaro who broke the nose of Jimmy Rave at one point here at Rampage Pro Wrestling. So we know that uh, the history is there. And uh, he took it very hard when Salonaro turned his back. Hawkins forced back into the corner. Good teamwork right here now as Corey Hollis tags in. Hawkins reluctant to release the hold, finally does. And he's suffering for it, but a ton of fight in that. Adrian Hawkins never stops. Repeated blows the stomach, fighting up from his knees. Manages to get some control, but Hollis pulls him back into the corner. Great strength by Hollis. Hollis now has him in that corner up on that turnbuckle, just driving him backwards. And look at the strength of Corey Hollis just dumps him down. Beautiful maneuver there. He had hooked him underneath a little bit more. He, that could have been a finishing maneuver right there, but reversals back and forth roll through there. Hawkins, but amateur wrestling showing through on the part of Corey Hollis manages to get the mount position, and he's still in control at this point. You can always see the amateur background in Corey Hollis whenever he's in a wrestling ring. And a lot of great wrestlers started with amateur backgrounds. We know that uh, from impact, Kurt Angle is certainly a great Olympic uh, wrestler. Well, in the history of professional wrestling, various promoters lean toward wrestlers with amateur backgrounds. I know Eddie Graham in the state of Florida, also had influence here in the state of Georgia, used to prioritize wrestlers with an amateur background for his roster, had a very specific style. Others went for former football players like Cowboy Bill Watts, Ernie still Lyle. others for more flashy characters. But here in the state of Georgia and in the state of Florida, we had a tendency to skew toward those with an amateur wrestling background, and it shows through here today in the ring right now as we see wrestlers with amateur background and that technique. Right there, Patrick Benjamin thrown in, drop toe hold, takes him down up and over and drops an elbow as Frankie Valentine cover. Could have him, no. And moves in now, full-on twist on the arm of Patrick Bentley. Tag is made now, and fast tags in and out, a boot to the arm of Bentley. Bentley in phenomenal condition. Understand he's a former weight trainer. Uh, he does a lot of the physical well, fitness shows. He has been a uh, competitor in bodybuilding and uh, recently in a, in a fitness contest, ended up with the gold medal in that particular event. 
So in various other activities involving fitness, tremendously competitive, but also a consummate professional wrestler. But right here, I don't care how strong you are and what kind of shape you're in, that's going to hurt. At one time, known as the human action figure, this guy phenomenal shape. And now a front chance where he has him down now. Has both the arm and the uh, head hooked and now pummeling the chest. Trying to fight for control here. You see this a lot when they grab a uh, hold. They try to pummel him down because they want to keep the control. Now, hands full of hair, referee calls for a break. And he lets go as he slams him backwards. Well, there's a lot of history now, and particularly with Patrick Bendley. You remember it was Patrick Bendley who at War Games turned his back on Adrian Hawkins, on J-Rod, on Kyle Matthews, on Ace Rockwell. Also, by the way, conspicuous by his absence. Ace Rockwell still obviously suffering from some of the injuries that he occurred. He came back recently, but I understand that he's still in uh, rehabilitation for injuries that he has, well, first at the hands of Jimmy Rave, and then again in war games where he was busted open. I'm thinking did considerable damage to him. I think that Patrick Bentley felt like a chicken wishbone as they pulled his legs apart. That corner for sure as he's bullied backwards and the tag is made and Corey Hollis is in there to cut him off. That is no man's land for sure. Hard shot echoing across the building. Retaliation now by Frankie Valentine. Bentley took a lot of punishment, but sometimes you've got to do that to get the advantage. And when he did, pulled the man over and now taking over Corey Hollis. But Frankie Valentine still strong here on Hollis. Just a week ago, we saw these two in action. Clearly, Hollis learned something from that, managed to escape that. Look at that strength on the part of Hollis, has him up. He's in the rat now, and that's a submission hold and drops him down hard. Reminiscent of Lex Luger right there. The total package. And now, back tag as Chip Day comes in. We have front tags, back tags. Already taken over with those kicks. Chip Day extremely dangerous when it comes to the striking with his feet. His most potent weapon are his kicks and stomps. He's taking advantage of those on Frankie Valentine. You ever notice that Chip Day always seems to have a bad attitude? Just always has a chip on his shoulder. Uh, so to speak. Uh, ar, 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 ar. <laughs> and now version of the Cobra hold here. Has him locked up. Cut off that air supply and control the man. Well, and the angle he's got that arm. No leverage possible right there for Frankie Valentine. There's no way he's going to pull that arm directly. He's going to have to force himself up to a vertical base. Try to use some of that leverage advantage to get out of this hold. And you can see he's trying to do that right here. As he gets him up, he's using the other arm to force the arm up and manages to take him over. Good maneuver by Valentine. But whoa, glancing blow, but you could tell he caught it. We heard it over here and now back in Patrick Bentley. Bentley with a blow to the side there, hooks him, grabs him, takes him over, snaps Zuflex, takes him a little bit close over to the corner, but hooks that leg, only a two count. Showing that massive power he possesses, snaps him down hard. And that takes the air right out of your sails. Picks him out now with a side suplex. Covers him. You know, if anyone in here got a pin over the TV champion in a non-title match, surely they'd be top contenders right there. Benley out with control. Tags in Corey Hollis back in the corner. Hollis cues up. Punts him right there into the midsection. Hooks him, rolls him over, goes for the pin again. You, know, you talked about this battle royal and the whole roster being in there. I just wonder if you're in there and could the ring hold those two right now? Don't know. Like when they said the entire locker room, Doc didn't clarify whether that included Sal Renaro and Jimmy Rave, but I have to assume it may. And if they're both in there, then Katie barred the door. You may need to put a new roof on the building. Very much so. When he says the locker room, you wonder, will Stars be returning for that particular match? Fans, the only way you're going to know for sure, be here on December 4th. You're not going to want to miss it. Can we get Charlie Cash up in there? I hope not. <laughs> so who would get him over the top row? Crane. <laughs> Now picks him up now and sets him on that top turnbuckle. Hangs him upside down by his bootstraps. And all three in position right oh, now. Oh, man. Two to the side and then one to the middle. Frankie Valentine not able to do a thing. Tied up in a tree of woe for sure. Remember now, that down at Ross song upside down? Only a two count, though. This Frankie Valentine is simply amazing. His ability to get out of a bad situation just remarkable. It's one of the reasons why this young man, a smaller professional athlete, has been able to become the television champion at Rampage Pro Wrestling. And right there, he has a chance to no. Chip Day stopped him, showing the great professionalism he has uh, learned over the years. Great experience factor here for Chip Day. 
you notice, unlike a lot of uh, teams, Jimmy Raver proved team are to go for a lot of pinfall attempts. They're trying to win the match, not just do damage to their opponents. Stops that kick, spins him around. That time caught oh. him from the back. And that had to hurt. Man, just that should have knocked his lights out right there. He's barely moving. That into there I'm now. not even sure he's conscious. Hollis back in. Both of these men recently took on Frankie Valentine. He managed to be victorious, and he obviously learned something there. Both men take the other out, and J-Rod is in, and now it's all J-Rod. Hollis still down. Might have done some damage to that leg when he collided with Chip Day. Oh, he out goes the kick. leg of Chip Day by a vicious kick from J-Rod, known for his lethal weapon in the feet, too, and that knee, of course. Running Bulldog now. J-Rod now with a forearm in the corner on Chip Day. Arm hook now reversal by Day. J-Rod hits that corner, charges in, and up and over on that turnbuckle. Well, not he might quite over. Oh, but cut off right there by Bentley. Beautiful positioning, and he's got him positioned for the destroyer now. And that could be lights out right here for J-Rod. But no, can't get him, can't get him. J-Rod instead has him prepared to slingshot him over. Decides the other corner is better. Looks for it, sees it, goes for it. Patrick Bentley introduced to that corner pad. And now J-Rod still a house of fire, slamming Chip J into his partner, and Patrick Bentley just rolling down to the floor. J-Rod charges in with a super knee. Double knees right there, Cat, both of them. Chip Day, though, in position, catches him with a mule kick, hits the ropes, comes off, but J-Rod was ready, single leg, takes him down on a flatliner type of move, comes across, knee to the side of the head, neck breaker. And J-Rod's a house of fire here. But Hollis and caught from is behind in. on that time and carry. He's got him in that torture rack, Ben. And that is the rack, and that is the submission maneuver. And J Rod manages to get out on his own, and he's got him with the knee. Referee Stan Robinson on the other side. Wait a minute, J Rod's got him. He's got him. What covered. is Patrick Bentley doing? Stan Robinson not seeing it. He's got a pin. Senton right there on J Rod by Bentley. Bentley pushing. Wait, now Bentley's not even a legal man. He just came down and one, two, three, Patrick Bentley went even the little man, he just pinned J-Rod. Referee didn't see it, didn't catch that change. They did. Good maneuver there by Patrick and Bentley. Gotta say that wait a minute, referee Bentley, Dustin Robinson is Warren coming out. Hollis and Chip Day. Argument between the two referees. Fans are pointing out what they saw happen that Stan Robinson didn't, Dustin Robinson did. Looks like there may be some change right here, Ben. Maybe they'll be restarting the match, reversing the decision. Let's wait to hear from it. Talking to Miss Alley now, the uh, ring announcer, the, the official de decision as the referees are in a quandary. We had a pinfall, but obviously not the legal man. The referee, Justin Robinson. Wait a minute, wait a minute. now he he here. Once again. He just threw her down. He You've threw been it. out for again. since day one. I don't care if you're the senior official, I make the rules here. Wait, Jimmy Ray now attacking the referees. He has lost his mind. Well, they're attacking out of the ring. Here comes j -Rod. He's throwing the referee in the ring. Right. What is Jimmy Rave doing? And the approved team has managed what to What is Jimmy Rave doing? Now Rave has a hold of a pair of scissors. It looks like he's going to. He has lost his mind. Preston Robinson with those. Long looks. And he's actually cutting the hair of no. Dustin Robinson right now. Somebody's going to stop this. Right now, I don't, somebody definitely, does. wait a minute, here's Renaro. Sal Renaro has that chair. And thank goodness, Dustin Robinson Back in the saved. ring, come Hawkins, comes J-Rod. A little worse for wear, but the ring's been cleared. I don't know what's gotten into Jimmy Rave, Ben. Not anything good, that's for sure. This and is twice now that he's assaulted Miss Alley. He is not going to be able to get away with it. Fans have already expressed their outrage at that. Dr. Gayton is going to have to take some action at this point. Obviously Jimmy Rave so. is out of control. We've got to get something done about that, uh, fans. We're going to get order back here. Coming up next, Jeremy Vane defends the title against Kyle Matthews. Don't go away. I can't believe that. 